Hey everyone. So now that we've studied a little bit about Ohm's law and electrical power, we're going to take that information and apply it to circuits. Um, now circuits is a very important concept uh, to learn and understand because every piece of electronic equipment in our world runs using some sort of, of circuit down from the uh, simplest flashlight um, to a calculator, to your computer, to airplanes, to you know, basically anything that involves electronics uses uh, circuitry in some sense or another um, and applies these basic concepts we're going to learn. Um, before we jump right in and learn about circuits, we have to understand a little bit about circuitry language. Okay, so uh, here's a few symbols we're going to see throughout uh, this, this video and the next couple of videos as well. Um, this first one is a battery. So any of the individual horizontal lines here, they represent just the wires. These two vertical lines you see, one big and one short, this represents a battery with the long line being the positive and the short line being the negative end of the battery. Okay, you can take multiple batteries and put them together. Like if you ever put batteries into something, usually it takes more than one. Uh, so we draw that as such. Um, a few different pieces, other pieces of, of of equipment that might be in a circuit. We have a fuse. Okay, we draw as so. Uh, a resistor, which is just a zigzaggy line. Uh, a lamp. So we're going to look at a couple of other ways to draw lamps as well as LEDs as we go. Um, we have a variable resistor. So this arrow through here means that the resistance can be changed. Um, we have a switch down at the bottom. Uh, currently, the switch is in the open position. As you see, it's breaking the connection of the circuit. Our, our wire, or just our flat single wire, a voltmeter, which is represented by a V, and an amp meter represented by an A. So an, what an ammeter does is it measures the current, and a voltmeter measures the voltage uh, across a particular load in the circuit. So we're going to start by looking at uh, a series circuit. So what a series circuit is, is a circuit in which two or more resistors are connected end to end so that the same current passes through both. Okay, if a bulb in a circuit burns out, then the entire string of light burns out. Um, so we're going to look at, at, at the following. But before we do that, let's go over uh, to our little simulation over here, circuit simulation. Um, so the first one here, I just have a battery with nothing on the in the circuit, just the battery itself. What happens if we hook this up? Uh, is this actually creates a short circuit? Okay, um, there's nothing preventing the flow of electrons. So they flow uninhibited through the circuit at a very high current. Um, and yeah, don't hook a battery up to itself or you may get it to start to get quite, quite hot. Uh, so this is why we need some resistance in the circuit in order to slow it down. Stop that. Um, so I've created this circuit down below. We have a singular light bulb in it as well as our battery. There's two different ways to show current in a circuit. One is using electrons. So I'm going to hook this one up. You'll see, okay, now that we have a resistor in our circuit, which is in this case, our resistor is our light bulb, it slows down the current uh, and we have a safe line. Okay, so right now it's showing the electron flow, um, but in physics, we generally talk about conventional current. Uh, which is the current going from the positive terminal of the battery into the negative terminal of the battery, so the reverse of the electron flow. So we're going to stick with conventional current as we go through this unit, because that is the notation we'll use as we study this section. Um, so here's again our resistor. Okay, we have one resistor on here uh, of 10 ohms. Our battery has a voltage of 9. So let's see what happens. We know Ohm's law, V equals IR. So let's see what happens to the current as we increase the resistance. Let's do it quickly so we can see the current goes down. And when the current goes down, we also see the light bulb gets quite a bit dimmer as, as, as the current's not moving as fast through it. It's not generating uh, quite uh, as, as much energy here. Okay, so we'll bring this back down and we can look at the same thing. What happens when we increase the voltage? So increase our power supply here and it goes up. Okay, current gets quite high. If resistance stays the same, we can see the light bulb getting brighter. Eventually, 
the current would get too fast. So batteries are designed to be able to handle a particular current. If the current goes above that, so if we increase the current and then let's drop the resistance a little bit, there we go. So we've hit a point where the current again is going too fast and disrupts the battery. So we don't want that to happen. So this is a simple circuit. In fact, this is the circuit you would see inside a flashlight. For example, just a singular power source, a light, and a wire that connects them. Now, generally, the only other thing present that would be in a flashlight, for example, would be a switch. So we close. Currently, it says the switch has infinite resistance. It's because it's open. It's not actually allowing the current to flow. You can ignore that symbol there. It's just a wire now. So we have a switch allowing it to operate. Now let's see what happens when we take a couple of these. Let's make a series circuit by adding in another light bulb. My light bulb cannot rotate, so we're just going to have to leave it like this. So we hook in another light bulb. Can you see that the light, so hold on, let me, let me get rid of it again hook this up look at look at the brightness of the light okay it's over here the rays are reaching the battery then we cut it and add it in oh, now we've dimmed the light in fact we've dimmed it by about half why half because we've just doubled the uh, resistance in the circuit so if we add a, a third light over here There we go. So now we've added a, a third light in. Let me just cut this so we can... Ah, there we go. So we've added a third light in. Okay, and again, we've dropped the current. Now, as it says over here, if a bulb burns out, the entire string of lights go out. So if we cut one of these bulbs, you see everything stops because we've put a break in the circuit. There's no way for the electricity to travel anymore. This is why if you've ever used the uh, Christmas lights where they say if one goes out, they all go out. This is the exact reason because they're set up in series. Now, newer Christmas lights uh, aren't set up quite the same way, and we'll look at that later on. Um, but here again is our simple series circuit. And I'm going to show you two pieces of equipment. I'm going to get rid of this one up here. I'm going to show you two pieces of important equipment. One is a voltmeter, and one is an amp meter. Now, a voltmeter measures a voltage across a load on the circuit or across a resistor. Now, we could put, before I measure this, we could put a, a resistor on here instead of a light bulb. Let's get rid of this light bulb and attach a resistor instead. Okay, it does the same thing except a light bulb allows us to actually change the energy into, change the electrical energy into light energy. So it's a resistor that allows us to harness the electrical energy, whereas a, a regular old resistor is just used to slow down the speed of the current. So let's take our voltmeter. If we put the voltmeter, we have our, our 10 volt battery here. If we put the voltmeter and measure across it, oh look, it reads a reading of 10 volts. You know, what happens if we take the voltmeter and read across this light bulb? We get, I'll put it to the other side just to make it positive. Oh, it doesn't really matter. We get 3.33 volts. So we get a third of the battery's voltage. If we do the same, if we measure this one, we get a third. And you can probably guess that the last one is also going to give us a third. So if we add up the voltage of each of the individual loads on the circuit, it equals the voltage of the battery. And that's a very important concept. So and this has to do with the conservation of energy. So all of this energy in the battery, as it travels through the circuit, has to go somewhere. If we only have one bulb, then that one bulb will get the entire 10 volts of energy. With three bulbs, the voltage splits into thirds since they're all equal resistance. If they were different resistances, each one would get a little bit of a different amount of voltage. Now with the current, take a look at the current as it travels. Okay, if we, for instance, drop the resistance in this bulb, look what happens to the current everywhere. So you can imagine electricity almost like traffic flow. 
uh, in cars. Okay, if we affect, this is one street. So if we affect the flow of traffic or the flow of electricity in one spot along the circuit, it's going to affect every single spot equally. Now, if we want to find the current, what we have to do is use an amp meter. Now, the voltage, again, measures a potential difference across two points. So we put it on one side of a load, put it on the other side, and figure out the potential difference across that load. Okay, so that's how we use a voltmeter. An amp meter has to actually be connected to the circuit in series if we want to measure the current at any given point. So we'll have to break it. Uh, move some of our pieces around and stick our amp meter in here and we get a current of 0.33 amps. Now with a series circuit, if we take this out and let's say put it uh, down below, we still get a current of 0.33 amps. So like I mentioned before, the current is the same everywhere. If we change the resistance of this, you'll see that the current starts to drop as we increase the resistance because we're causing the electricity to move slower and slower through this circuit. Or alternatively, we drop it and we allow the current to increase. Okay, so let's go take a look at some of our uh, equations here. So by the conservation of energy, we know that the total voltage provided by the battery is equal to the sum of the voltages across each of the different uh, resistors in the circuit. In other words, the total change in energy must be zero over the whole circuit. So this gives us the equation of our voltage, um, or our total voltage, the voltage on our battery, has to be equal to the sum of the voltages across each of the individual uh, resistors. Okay, now the current, the current is, as we saw, the same everywhere in our circuit. So the total current is just equal to the current in any given position. So let's say I1 equals I2 equals I3 is equal to the total current. Lastly, the resistance. So how do we calculate the resistance? We know each resistance affects the current, but how much? What we can do is use Ohm's law. Okay, so we're actually going to take our uh, voltage equation here. Okay, so we'll draw it down below. We're going to take our voltage equation, Vt equals V1 plus V2 plus V3. And we're going to substitute in, because we know that V is equal to IR. And we know I is the same everywhere. So we can substitute that. We get IRT, for total R, is equal to I. R1 plus IR2 plus IR3. Okay, and then since the I's are the same, we can divide by I to get rid of those, leaving us with an equation for resistance, which is resistance is the sum of each of the individual resistors in the uh, circuit. So these are three important equations new equations for series circuits. Okay, our equation for the, the voltage, which is the sum of the voltage across all the loads, the current, which is the same everywhere, and the resistance, which is the sum of the resistors, uh, or the sum of the resistances of, of each resistor across the circuit. When we use Ohm's law for solving these questions, if, for example, we're trying to find the current on resistor 1, then we would have to use the voltage for resistor 1 and the resistance for resistor 1. So we have to keep things consistent. So here is the first example. Find the current leaving the battery uh, in this circuit. Okay, so we have a voltage of 24 coming from our battery, three resistors of 12, 25, and 18. Let's take a look over at the simulation again for a second. We can actually uh, construct this. So let's put our voltage up to 24. And then our first resistor here at the top is 12. So we'll increase you to 12. Then we have uh, 25 and 18. Okay, so according to our simulation here, if we have this circuit, which we do have set up, we get a current of 44 amps. 
So let's see if this is actually true. Um, so we can start. So this is going to be, this is the voltage of our battery. So this is our total voltage here. Just to make keep things uh, consistent, we're going to call this R1. We'll call this resistor R2. We'll call this resistor R3. Okay, so we know from our previous equations that the total resistance in this circuit is going to be equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. Or we get 12 plus 25 plus 18 which gives us 55 ohms. So now we have the total resistance, we have the total current, or sorry, the total voltage. Now we can find the total current using Ohm's law. Total current is equal to the total voltage divided by the total resistance. We get 24 over 55, uh, which gives us 0.4 for amps lining up with the circuit on the right. Okay, so the second problem is actually continuing from the first. Um, let's find the potential difference across each resistor. So how much voltage is each resistor using? Again, we can, we can check our answers. So let's calculate it first and then we'll go back and check our answers. So we found that the current in our system here is equal to 0 0.44 amps. Now remember that is the current for across any resistor. It stays constant throughout the uh, circuit if it is a series circuit. So now we can find our voltages across each one. Now to do that we have to look at, so again this was resistor 1, 2, and 3. So we have voltage 1 is equal to I times R1. Okay, we can plug that in. So I is 0 0.44 We go and R is 12, so we get a voltage of 5.3 volts. Okay, we do that exact same thing. Voltage 2 um, for each one, we get voltage 2 is 11 volts, and we get voltage 3 is 7.9 volts. Okay, approximately, I am rounding these uh, a little bit. So then, if we add up all of these voltages together to get our total voltage, okay, we have 5.3 uh, plus 11 plus 7.9. That gives us uh, approximately, within a bit of rounding error, 24 volts, which was our, our total uh, for the system. So that's a little bit about series circuits. Uh, in the next video, we'll look at parallel circuits and then get into studying some that are a little more complicated.